Hi there, welcome back. Welcome back to my channel. A little bit about everything. Um, for those who are new to the channel, um, you can subscribe at the bottom of the screen and you can hit the like button if you see what, if you like the information, you can hit the like button and um, uh, don't be afraid to leave a comment. Um, something that would add to, this, to the subject in a positive manner, okay? Um, okay, so today's topic is nuts and bolts, okay? Um, this is something that you're going to encounter in daily shop life. Every tool you got, if, if I do just look around the room, uh, doors, they're fastened with they got fasteners, nuts and bolts on them. Everything I look around in the shop, nuts and bolts, right? So uh, they're pretty important, and you should have a basic knowledge of these things, right? And um, like, have you ever grabbed a bolt and then try to thread it in, and whoa, it doesn't go in? What's wrong with this? You know? Well, that's because you need more information on the subject. Not any nut and bolt will do for for the application, right? So um, uh, threads threads on bolts come in right hand or left hand, right? Tidy righty, lefty loosey, right and left hand threads. Uh, left hand threads are going to encounter in situations where. Um, the directional, like a spin on an armature, for 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 one thing, um, or a spindle, if it is forward and you have a right hand thread, well, as you spin, you got momentum. Let's see, it's a it's a, a saw. Okay, you have momentum on that blade. If when you stop your your tool that the blade wants to spin the bolt loose, you have to take the opposite thread for that application. So that's where you would use left hand threads. Okay. Um, so some of the parts on bolts or or features uh, you have thread pitch. Okay. That's tooth to tooth. That's the pitch. Now there is also another term called TPI. Okay. That is thread per inch. Okay. And we're going to cover that later. Okay. Uh, the top of the uh, uh, of a of a thread is a crest, the bottom of it is a root, the side that connects the crest and root is the flank, and most threads you're going to encounter are 60 degrees, with the exception of acne, square, and uh, buttress. Um, well, there's a lot of them, but those are just a few of them, right? Okay, and uh, from root to root, that is the minor diameter, and from the center of the flank, or where most of the work is done on those threads, is the pitch diameter. Okay, you also have these on gears and racks and stuff like that, the pitch diameter. It's the face, it's the middle of the face where most of the action and strain happens, okay. And uh, major diameter is from crest to crest. Okay, that's the major diameter. Okay, so let's turn the page. Also, um, you have the uh, American National Form Threads and met, met, Metric Threads. These are the two types 
that uh, are most likely to encounter or uh, American national, okay, national course fine, uh, national special, and national thread pipe. National thread pipe has a taper to them, right? So when you tie them, it creates a seal. National thread pipe, okay, national pipe thread. Uh, national special. Um, I'd have to look it up. Off the top of my head, I don't have an example for you. Uh, fine and coarse threads. Uh, if you use a fine thread, um, one revolution of the of the nut is gonna probably half or somewhere in that region. Um, the clamping force, you need probably two turns of a fine to equal the same clamping force as you would on one revolution on the course. But the fine will give you um, a stronger thread because there are more threads per inch. Okay? So you're most likely to find in high tensile strength application a fine thread than a coarse but after a certain size it doesn't matter anymore not as much um, and metric threads um, the threads are all the same right um, uh, but I'm going to get to that portion later okay I have an example here of a uh, nomenclature or how you would see uh, or ask for a certain type of thread and diameter of bolt, okay? In this case, it's uh, imperial or, or standard. It's not a metric thread, okay? So you got a half inch and this is threads per inch as I, I stated earlier. Well, you got 13 threads in one inch. And in this instant, that makes this a national course. Okay. Um, the national fine, you might see uh, an 18 here instead or a 20. Okay. So you have your crest, your root, the angle of the thread. Uh, these threads have flat tops and bottoms, okay, and the diameter, uh, the uh, depth of the thread, okay, so this is how you would calculate the depth of the thread here, okay, uh, you want your pitch, so that's 1 over threads per inch, which in this case is 77 thousandths. So, if you multiply 77 thousandths by this number here, you would get 47 thou. So, 47 thou is the depth of your thread. From here, you can also find your minor diameter. You already have your major diameter, which is half inch, okay? But your minor diameter, which would be root to root, is calculated in this fashion. You get your major diameter minus two times your uh, depth of thread. Okay, so minor diameter in this case is 406 thousandths, right? 406 thousandths. And if you want to know your crest width, okay, which this is important if you're cutting a thread single point. Um, you need to know the width of the tip of your cutter because that's what's going to determine this, right? So you have to know your crest, your, your, your root, uh, your root width. So it's a uh, pitch over, over 1 eighth, okay? So 1 eighth times your pitch, which was one, 1 over 13, gives you 10 thousandths of an inch. 
So this is ten thousandths of an inch and that's ten thousandths of an inch. But that number is important for the width of your cutter. You have to grind off the tip of your cutter once you have it grounded down to 60 degrees and you got to make that ten thousandths of an inch if you want to cut this thread. Okay? Okay, so these are some of the uh, national course. This is a table for national course. Uh, in the 29th edition of the Machinery's Handbook, on page 1844, national course has uh, threads per inch ranging from 4 to 64. Now, you're going to find 40 on the micrometer. So these are pretty small. I've, I've seen some lathes go up to 48, but in my recollection, I can't see them having gone beyond that, but I'm sure they're out there because they exist, the threads exist, right? So, um, and when you get to a small diameter like that, like uh, in the knot numbers, Right, these are small, these are under one eighth of an inch, easy, right? For the major diameters. Uh, a number one uh, uh, bolt would have 64 threads per inch. Number two would have 56. Number three would have 48. Um, and number 12 would have 24 threads per inch. Oh. Uh, from the same page, from the Machinery's Handbook, 1844, 29th edition, uh, the National Fine range from 12 to 80 threads per inch. Um, so, a zero, a not zero, 80 threads per inch. Not one, 72 threads per inch. Not two, 64. Not three, 56 threads per inch. Not 12, 28 threads per inch. Uh, type of threads. Uh, these are some of the common ones you're going to run into. Uh, the American Standard. Okay. Um, the uh, British Standard. BSW. Okay. Uh, unified threads. Unified threads are, are rounded off at the crest of the root. And okay, if I roll my threads instead of cutting them with a, 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 a die or a, a single thread point on the lathe, right? You can roll your threads. Okay. Well, when you roll your threads, you're not creating sharp corners. Okay. And if you had a bolt in a stretch, a stressed situation like uh, high vibrations um, and, and heavy loads, okay, that bolt is always going to break on a sharp corner. So these rolled threads create a, 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 a less chance of a break or snapping a bolt at a, a, a stressed out corner, right? Because the forces are acting all around here, not just in one spot. So if that was the case and in the root, bolt would want to break here at, at, at the uh, beginning of the threads. So that's where it would want to break, but not if it's rounded it off. Because the stress is, dip, is a, uh, over a larger surface area, okay? And uh, acme threads. Acme threads are look like the square threads I had earlier on, on the board, uh, but more exaggerated. And on the lathe, the lead screw is an acme thread. It's 29 degrees, not 60. And uh, Brown and Sharp was 29. They used to make tools. Uh, you still can run into some of their stuff. 29 degrees. Uh, square threads. Square threads were used for lift, lifts, hydraulic uh, uh, 
a lifting situation, like uh, you have some, some uh, jack screws, some of them were squared on, on hoists and stuff. Uh, the older stuff might be squared, but now they, they've gone over to Acme. Uh, spark plug threads, not common. Uh, the angle isn't 60 on, on a spark plug thread. These are, are, are different. You have to look it up. Um, and fits and classifications. Like, there's normally like three fits to a nut and bolt. Okay? Uh, to, to, to the nut. Okay? Well, a class one is a loose fit for uh, like farm implements. If, if you drop it in the dirt or something and there's grease on it and you pick up some sand, you can still turn, turn that bolt in, right? Now, number two, it has a tighter clearance, okay? Um, which is most of what you're gonna run into. And a three is a precision fit. Now, you would use a, a precision fit on something where you don't want any uh, uh, any slop, like a precision tool, like a lathe or something, or a, a certain instrument. You have to know what the grade of your bolt is. Okay, this is the uh, unified national course or fine or or American standard or 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 whatever, they're, they're all going to have markings on, on them. This isn't the metric yet. This is only the imperial stuff, right? Okay? So, and I hope I'm not misma mis mis mismatching the uh, terms there. Um, so, tensile strength. Okay? How much strength can you put on a, a bolt before it snaps? Right? The more you clamp down, the more pressure is pulling that bolt apart, okay? Well, these are some of the values, okay? Uh, like, a plain old SAE would be probably just plain old steel. No heat treatment, no nothing, right? No forging, no nothing. Uh, it, it's 60 to 74,000 PSI. Okay, uh, a grade 5 bolt, which is very common, okay, uh, 90 to 120 thousand PSI, pounds per square inch, so you have to take that into account. If you had an inch, you could put that on it. If you had half an inch, you can put 60,000 on it, right? So you have to keep that in mind, pounds per square inch, okay? Um, well, what I mean by that is... If you have an inch bolt, you can put 120,000 pounds on there before it snaps. Well, if it's only half inch, you can only put 60,000, which is half of that. That's a grade five. Okay, so now for the metric stuff. Okay, this is very, very common. Automobiles and stuff. Uh, you don't find standard stuff on, 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 on automobiles anymore unless it's like aftermarket accessories or something like that that come from the states. That's about the only place you're going to find standard on, on, on new vehicles and stuff. Okay, so uh, nomenclature, you see this. If you're asking for uh, a bolt, let's say I want M for metric, 8 is uh, millimeters, okay? So 8 millimeter, 125. Well, what's 125? It's not treads per inch. It's treads per... millimeter. So there's no finding the pitch 1 over the number of threads per inch, right? So, it's threads per millimeter. I'm just going to underline it so you don't get confused. Uh, so, the depth of thread, there's a constant which is 54,127.54,127 times the pitch, which in this case is just 
one two five so it's easier okay so the depth of thread is 68 millimeters on a 0 0.68 millimeters on a eight millimeter uh, bolt so the minor diameter same formula you take your eight millimeter minus two times one depth which was 68 which is found it 0.68 so you get uh, that is your minor diameter 6.64 millimeters okay and uh, the crest uh, the, the root and the crest are not the same um, for the crest you're going to use 0.125 or a quarter times the pitch so that's the, the, the crest width now if you're cutting a thread single point on the lead, you need the root width. That's the width you're gonna you're gonna put on your cutter tip. 60 degrees either side, and the width of that tip that you're gonna grind off is gonna be a quarter of the pitch. Quarter of 125 is 0.31. That's what you're gonna put millimeters. That's what you're gonna put at the end of your cutter, okay? Same as before, you got to have certain grades of metric bolts, okay? This is an example of what you would see on the head of the bolt, 8.8, .8, okay? And uh, that's for tensile strength, pulling it apart, right? Because a bolt's a clamping, uh, clamping tool. So, a thousand PSI is equal to 6.1, 6.8, nine four eight megapascals okay and one megapascal is equal to 145 psi this is in megapascals so if you have a 12.9 rating on your bolt you got a 1200 megapascals rating which is very strong or, or tensile strength wise and uh, 10.9 is 1034 8, 8 like that one would be 827 megapascals of tensile strength okay I need a metric 10 with a pitch of 2 two millimeters, two threads per millimeter, okay? Now, how do I find that, okay? Well, I'm gonna take you over to my toolbox and, and show you a mess of bolts, and I'll show you how to figure it out. Okay, so here we are, and I have a mess of bolts right here, and I want a metric bolt. And I want it to be a 10, a 10 2, right? So if I start looking around, no, that's that's not it. I, I can sort of tell, like, the diameter's got to be 10 millimeters, right? And this is a carriage bolt, so that's not it. Well, what about this one? There's a 9 stamped on it, so that's 9 megapascals, right? That's its strength, but is it a 10? Well, let's bring it over here. And normally you take a micrometer, but you can still do it with a, uh, with a vernier, right? And I have a measurement of 9.85. So that is a 10. They don't come in, in other sizes, like uh, you put a 10, it's not going to be a fraction of a 10, right? That's a 10 millimeter bolt. But is it two, two threads per millimeter? Well, you need one of these thread pitch gauges, right? And um, this right here, it's hard to make out. Uh, I can sort of see a 2.0 there. They're, they're a little rusted, but they still work. 
So, bring it over here and let's see if it fits. That's a pretty good fit. So I have here in my hand what I'm looking for. And that's how it's done. Okay.